Hello there, I am Dr. C.N. Okolubo. You're welcome to my YouTube channel where we'll be solving problems relating to business mathematics, business statistics, analysis for business decision, as well as other related topics. I want to encourage you as you go through these videos with me, you have your paper, your pen, and your calculator to solve these problems with me. Also, please do like, share, and subscribe so that you can receive notifications for upcoming videos that we'll be uploading. Thank you. Thank you for joining me once again on this channel. We are going to look at another example of test of hypothesis. And we're going to look at another example again of one tail test and how we solve such problems. Come along with me as we look at what we have um, today. We have the example two. And we have the purpose of conducting the employee satisfaction scale is to measure the level of job satisfaction among the employees. In a sample of 18 employees, the mean ES index, that's employee satisfaction index, was 10.3. Mind you, the mean, the sample, it's a sample, 18 member sample, and the mean, mind you, sample and mean, and then we have number. Remember, in solving a problem of uh, um, hypothesis testing, there are certain things we're looking for. We're looking for population mean, population mean, we're looking for sample mean, please come closer. Then we are looking for population standard deviation or we're looking for sample standard deviation we're looking for the n of the sample. So, for what we're reading now, we're seeing that the sum, this in a sample of 18 employees. So, n is 18 already given. The uh, the mean ESI is 10.3. So that's the sample mean, 10.3, with a standard deviation of 7.3. Which standard deviation is this? This is the sample standard deviation. Whenever you're given standard deviation, the standard deviation will normally follow the sample standard deviation. But if you are given a population standard deviation, the population standard deviation will follow the population mean. Take note of that. The sample standard deviation in the statement will follow the sample mean. And then this, the population standard deviation will follow the population mean. So in this case, this is a sample mean. And the sample mean is 7.3. The question now is that, in this, is this sufficient evidence to allow us to conclude that the mean ESI is greater than 9 in a population of similar respondents? What are, what's, what's the value of the 9 there? What's the, what's the um, definition of the 9? The definition of the 9 is the population mean. So we have 9 here as population mean. And then look at the word greater than. The word greater than. What does that tell us? It means this is a one tailed test. It's a right tailed test. But it's a one tailed test. So let's solve this problem again. Now, the first thing we do, let's state the hypothesis. State the hypothesis. In the hypothesis, HO, which is the null hypothesis, is mean is 9. Then H1, we're saying that mean is greater than 9. This is the statement of hypothesis. Then the next thing we do is to um, standardize our um, our difference of means. Standardize standardize difference of means. So that's like getting the t test statistic. So in this case, it's going to be t equals to 
sample mean minus population mean divided by sample standard deviation all over root of the number of sample. This will give us our sample mean is what? 10.3 minus population mean is 9 divided by sample standard deviation is 7.3 divided by mean of a I I mean square root of 18. I'll write this properly. This is um, square root of 18. Let's continue. 10.3 minus 9 will give us 1.3 divided by 7.3 all over square root of 18 will give us 4.243 4.243 we'll continue with this this is 1.3 divided by 7.3 divided by 4.243 that will give us 1.72 and then we'll continue with this 1.3 divided by 1.72 will give us 0.7558 approximately 0.76 so this is the test statistic that we will need to compare with our critical value in our um from our test table now the next thing we do is to determine our critical value our critical value in this case is that from from the t test table we want to check 0 0.01 significance level one tilled test how do we know it's one tilled test look so i've written this here this one tilled test it is one tilled because we're dealing with greater than we're dealing with greater than that's one tilled test then we have our degree of freedom degree of freedom is n minus one we're introducing degree of freedom because the n which is number of sample is less than 30 and here we have 18 minus 1 that gives us 17. so let's go to our critical let's go to our table and check for this value for us to compare please look um, around with me the up here please come closer up here we have our level of significance for one tail test, and these are the values we're going to look at. Not this one, this one. And we're looking for 0 0.01. This 0 0.01 according to our question, one tail test. And the, the um, degree of freedom is 17. So we'll come down to 17. Please come closer, sir. 17. And then we are now going across to 0 0.01. This is 0. 01. What we have here is 2.567. Look at 0 0.01 under 17. That is 2.567. Okay, so our critical value is 2.567. Now I want to compare this value against this uh, value that we have as a difference of means. How do we compare? We are going to draw our distribution curve this way our mean is 10 point no our mean is 9 sorry our mean population mean is 9 and since it is greater than we're dealing with the right tail test our critical value our critical value is 2.567 this is our rejection region and this is our acceptance region acceptance region now the question is we are having 0 0.7558 or 0 0.76 now looking at this here this is our point we'll take a decision 0. 0. 0.76 will it be on this side towards zero or on this side if we want to cut if we want to consider where will it be will it be 
towards is it greater than 2.5 or is it less than 2.5 as you can see it is less than so it's around here it's around this so we have 0 0.76 so and it's falling within the acceptance region is outside the critical or um, rejection region so we have to now um, decide we now decide let me come here and write decision here decision now since since our t statistic of 0 0.76 is less than less than critical value of 2.567 and lies outside the rejection region rejection region we will fail to reject the HO. That's you can see it here, it's within the rejection region. Now we fail to reject HO. It means that there is no there's not enough evidence in the sample. to reject HO. So now what's our conclusion? Our conclusion is that employees 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 ESI that's employees um, employees advent index is greater than nine in similar population because you what you do is that you look at the statement in the question and you try to phrase it in your own conclusion so this is the answer so what this means that we will in this case also we will fail to reject HO we're going to accept HO based on the uh, um, tests that we have conducted, statistical tests that we have conducted. Thank you for following me on this session. Uh, please make sure that you look at this very well, watch this video again, and do not forget to make a comment or two. Like this video and subscribe. We're looking forward to you. Thank you.